Okay, I'm going to walk you through how to calculate um, the bulge height and it involves some trigonometry so and some um, ratio work. So I'll try to be as clear as I possibly can. Okay, first of all, this is what I mean by bulge height, this little piece right in here that I'm going to color in in red. That's what I want to calculate as bulge height. Now before I can calculate that bulge height, I do have to know what some angles are down here. Because you'll notice that I have some right angle triangles that are in here, which means that I can use just the right angle trigonometry in these little right angle triangles, but I need the angle down here. Now to calculate the angle down here, uh, and I'm going to just move that one, I'm going to move this line for right now so that we're not too worried about it, because what I want to do is calculate the whole angle. I'm going to call that angle theta and it's a fraction of the circle. Now the fraction of the arc up here um, compared to the whole circle is going to be the same as the fraction of this uh, angle compared to the whole circle. So what I have is that angle theta compared to the whole circle and if we're working in degrees we're going to take 360 degrees is going to be the same as the fraction of this arc to the whole circumference. Um, I'm going to not use the circumference that I found on Google. I'm going to use the radius in the circumference formula and say that this is 2 pi times the radius of the earth uh, which is 3959. Now the only thing left here is to say okay how how far apart are these going to be? Well a lot of times people are interested in how far it's going to be in one mile. So I'm going to use one mile I'd like to use kilometers, but most of the videos I see have it everything in miles. So I'm going to use one mile. Um, and 3959 is in miles as well. Has to be in order for this to work out properly. So I'm going to put the one over here. So in order to figure out what that angle in here is, and it's going to be really small since this is an arc of a mile, um, I have to uh, multiply both sides by 360. So I'm going to get 360 over 2 pi uh, times 3959. Nine. So I'm going to pull up my calculator and just calculate that. It's going to be tiny, teeny tiny. Where's my calculator? There it is. So we need to do 360 divided by uh, 2 divided by pi, there's my pi button, and divided by 3959. Nine. and we get 0 0.0144 so 0 0.0144 pull it back up again 72285 72285 8078 now there's a reason I'm keeping that many decimal points and it's because this is going to be so tiny that if I round it off it'll end up just looking like zero. So I'm keeping as many significant digits as I can. Now I don't need that whole theta. I only need half of it. Because if I pull this in that splits that triangle into two equal right angle triangles right down the center and I only want to work with one of them. So what I want is half of that. So this in here that I'm going to use is going to be approximately 0 0.007. Now I'm going to write it as 0 0.007, but I'm going to leave all of those digits in my calculator so that we get the right answer. So when I look at this thing, basically what I want to figure out this part in here, and I'm going to call that little part B for bulge, we need to figure out what A is because A and B together make up a radius of the circle uh, as well as these things. All three of these things are radius, radii. Okay. So if I can figure out what part A is, then B is just going to be the whole radius subtract off A and that will give me what my bulge height is. So in order to find A, I need to use this angle down here and I need to use this radius which is 3959. And if I use trigonometry, this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse is cos. So I need to use the cosine. So we're going to do cos 
of theta divided by 2, which is 0 0.007. And when I plug it into the calculator, I will use all of those numbers. Equals adjacent, which I don't know, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3959. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the 3959. So we go 3959 times the cos of 0 0.007. And that's going to give me what my A is. So let's actually plug that into the calculator. So the first thing I have to do is take this and divide it by 2, because that was my whole angle. So I'm going to go divided by 2. Now I have to take the cosine of it, so I'm going to hit the cos button. And now I have to divide by 3959. You can see this is really close to 1 as it is, so I'm going to times it. Did I say divide? I meant times. Times it by 3959. And this tells me what A is. So A is 3958. A equals 3958 point... Nine 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 six eight. Nine 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 six eight. And you can see how close it is to being the radius of the circle. Okay, it's very, very close to being the radius. So the bulge height, I'm just gonna take the radius and subtract this off. Now when I plug it into the calculator, this isn't the best calculator ever, I'm going to do it the other direction. So I'm gonna get a negative number, and I'm just gonna ignore that negative. So I'm gonna subtract off. Um, 3959, 3959, and see how small that is, and ignore the negative, we'll time, um, it's going to be a positive number, I just subtracted it the wrong way because that's the best way this calculator can do it. Um, so what B is going to be is 0 0.00003, 0 0.00003, now that is miles. We're going to want to change this to inches. Now there are 63,360 inches in a mile. So 0 0.00003 times uh, 63,360 inches in a mile. And of course I'm going to use all of the numbers that are still on my calculator. I'm going to multiply that and I'm just going to get a negative answer. We're going to ignore the negative answer. Remember I subtracted the wrong way because the calculator has its limitations. Um, times by 63360 equals. And that looks like basically 2. And that's in inches. So in every mile for the bulge height, that is the bulge between the two, and we saw in my first video that bulge height was less than drop height. Uh, so this bulge height is only two inches in one mile. If we did the drop height, we talked before that that was going to be eight inches, but if you take a look at this, obviously that's smaller than that one. So that makes, makes sense. Okay, So the bulge height is two inches. Now, how, how would we change this if I wanted to be farther apart than one mile? Well, you would have to redo, there's no simple, um, simple calculation for this. There's no formula, there's no eight inches per mile squared formula for this one. You would have to go through these steps one more time and change this number every time. So if you wanted six miles, you would change that to six. If you wanted eight miles, you would change it to eight, et cetera, et cetera, and then go through this process again. Um, or you could program it into a into Excel and you'll see that we've got um, now the theta isn't going to match up because Excel works in radians not degrees and we did degrees in all of this but you can see that for the inches um, and basically for the miles this negative five means we got to move the decimal place back five spaces um, we're coming out to the same answer. So if we take a look at it, let's see what our viewing distance does to this number of inches. So if we go for two, now at two miles the bulge in between is eight. If we go for three, at three miles the bulge is 18. So it's not a linear relationship either. The farther you go, the faster, the bigger that bulge is getting. So if we go to four miles, that bulge is 32. 
and we're, we're talking inches. Okay. okay, the next part of this video is going to be a direct debunk of a video I just watched Jaronism do where he was trying to debunk the 8 inches per mile um, curvature formula. Uh, but he was using bulge height to do that. Now, as we saw in my diagrams before, bulge height and the 8 inches per mile curvature formula really have nothing to do with each other. But I'm just going to give you an overview of what he said. He said that um, basically he wanted to find, if he found the bulge height for one little section of the globe, so he figured, if he figured out what this is, since that's an eighth of the circle, then he could just multiply it by eight and he would get the curvature for the entire circle. Now, I'm going to show you in a minute why that doesn't work, but first of all, let's think about what he means by curvature of the entire circle, because I honestly, I don't know what he means by curvature of the entire circle. Uh, a curvature is is a comparison between two points. If you go around the entire circle, um, you're back to the same point. So in essence, the curvature of the entire circle is nothing. You, you can't just section it up into small pieces and then and then multiply them out and get anything that means, like it doesn't mean anything, means nothing at all. And you'll see that if you section it into smaller and smaller chunks, um, your answer is going to be different for the entire circle. So what Jaron said was, I'm going to find this little piece, whatever that is, and we'll times it by eight, and we will have the whole circle curvature. But he didn't know how to do that. So he decided to take the easy case and I will admit that this is the easy case and he's absolutely right in this. He said um, that if I take half the circle then the bulge height which he called curvature is going to be the radius and he's absolutely right. If we take half of a circle the bulge height is the radius of the circle. But then he said okay I'm going to take the radius and I'm going to times it by 2 because if half the circle is the radius then the whole circle is the radius times 2 which of course is the diameter. So he said the curvature for the whole circle is the diameter and now to find what one little piece, what one miles worth of curvature is, I'll have to take the whole circle curvature which was the diameter and divide it by the circumference. Now anytime you divide the diameter by the circumference, you're going to get the same number and it doesn't matter how big the circle is. And the reason for that is because the circumference divided by the diameter for any circle is actually the definition, one of the definitions anyway, of pi. So if you do that the other way around, what you get is the reciprocal of pi or 1 over pi. And that is going to be the same on every single circle. And Jaron wondered why we didn't know anything about that number. Why we didn't know anything about the reciprocal of pi? And that's because it's easier for most formulas to use pi, not the reciprocal of pi. Um, and if you know one, if you know what pi is, y you can always divide by pi instead of multiplying by pi if you needed the reciprocal. So there's no, there's no real advantage to knowing the reciprocal of pi. Um, but here, let me show you why why you can't just do that, why you can't find curvature for half the circle and then say okay the curvature for the whole circle is all the way around. That would also mean by by the same logic that I could take the curvature for a quarter of the circle which would be this and if I multiplied that by 4 I would get the whole circle. So if I multiplied it by 2 I'd get half the circle. Well, we already talked about the bulge height for half the circle as being the radius. Does this look like half the radius to you? Um, let's let's take a look and see if it's anywhere near half the radius. This thing, oh, whoop, that's all one piece. Well, we're going to move the whole thing. This thing, is that half the radius? No, that's not even close. Half the radius would be right here. Okay, so Already it's falling apart, but I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet again, and I've made a slight modification on the spreadsheet. Instead of having a viewing distance here, instead of directly typing in the viewing distance, I'm going to type in the fraction of the Earth. And 
right now my fraction of the earth is one mile. And I'm going to apply Jaronism's logic to see what the whole earth would be then. So if I've got a viewing distance, this is my, this is for one mile, um, then I'm going to multiply that and you take a look uh, up at my formula up here. This is B7 times D1. Well, B7 is this, the miles of curvature, miles of bulge height, um, times by D1 and D1 is the viewing fraction. So we take the bulge height times the number of pieces we have, which is what he wanted to do back in, in here. He wanted to take the bulge height times the number of pieces we have. Um, so in that case, what that got us, whoop, back to Excel, um, this gives us our actual bulge height for two, and it tells us that the per mile distance is, like it gives us something ridiculous here. Okay. But I'm going to show you that if I change that to 2, I'm actually going to get Jaronism's answer because that's the one he solved for. He found 2, he doubled it, then he divided it by the number of miles going all around to try and get the per mile thing. And oh, there it is again. So if I change that to 2, I split the earth into 2, now look what we get. We get the bulge height in miles as being the, di the radius and the per mile thing is that is actually 0 0.318 is 1 over pi. Okay, so we get the answer that Jaronism got, uh, but it's meaningless because if I split the circle up into more and more chunks, notice that that per mile thing is changing all the time. That's because it's not a linear relationship. That bulge height, we can't just say that um, that a quarter a quarter of the um, circle is going to be, like if I double it I'll get half of it. It just doesn't work that way. The bulge height is not a linear relationship. So you can see it it changes and it changes and it changes. So the, a couple of things that I want you to, to pull out of this is that Jaronism took a special case of half the circle um, and didn't realize that all of these other smaller cases would not get him the same answer and he didn't know how to do the math to find out what that bulge height was on the smaller cases so he couldn't see that that gave him the wrong answer and that's all I'm gonna say about that